Hey, welcome back. Caught myself slipping, looking at other uh, rose profiles, as we all do. And um, got me thinking about what my friend is always saying, Dev, uh, the Honorable Dev. It doesn't touch the red line. He's always <laughs> trying to get his, trying to get his ROR, his peak ROR, very high to touch the red line. <laughs> for, for him, that's a marker. He's not, I don't think he's actually serious about that, but peak ROR, high ROR, initial high ROR. Um, I see a lot of these tall ROR spikes and then they go and do their thing. And um, at first, you know, in my uh, early roasting journey, I was like, I don't even know that I should even care about it. And then towards the middle, I guess, of my roasting journey, I was like, I really, really care about it. I want to copy it. I want to like, like my profile needs to match their profile. <laughs> Not even considering the coffee that they're roasting, what they were trying to do with the coffee, the kind of machine that they were using. So that was kind of like misguided. Uh, that brings me to now and revisiting a lot of the sort of just like roast theories, tactics, strategies, uh, tools, um, things that people can do at the roaster and just revisiting why would I want to use a very high ROR? What's the, what's the meaning of it? Is that standard? Okay, I know that there are standards and you can deviate from them uh, to sort of fit the goals of a particular roast. But now that we're in this a little bit new phase um, and you're always learning, always evolving, and I like to revisit and make sure, not just make sure, but just like revisit what I've learned and sort of revisit my um, conceptual understanding of a certain thing, such as peak ROR, meaning like something like above like say um, 25 or 30 ROR, peak ROR, okay? That's what I'm gonna call high, right? I've seen a lot higher. Um, and I think that just depends on, uh, again, the coffee, the goals of the roast. Um, things like that, but I started to revisit it and I got curious in that while I'm not trying to copy somebody's profile based on nothing, it's just looking at the peak ROR and try to copy that anymore and sort of put that out of my mind, I got a little curious as to, okay, well, if this is a um, tactic to use at the roaster, to sort of get to an optimal level of taste, then I was intrigued, right? So I was like, okay, let me just revisit what peak ROR is all about. So first and foremost, ROR is your rate of rise. It's basically how fast you're moving through the roast. How fast are you getting to dry in? How fast are you getting to first cracked? How fast are you dropping this coffee, right? So. Typically, Black City profile coffees are pretty quick. We move fast through the roast. Um, and that's because I'm sort of an acid head. I like a lot of acidity in the cup. Um, but I'm learning that in order for me to be a well-rounded, learned roaster, coffee roaster, I should, I should still need to know how to make a good medium roast. Uh, based on the coffee that I'm using and adjust when I need to. I need to learn how to roast a dark roasted profile that maybe doesn't necessarily always just hit a certain number or a certain finishing temp, right? So I just want to have more tools in my back pocket as a roaster as I'm going to come across different types of coffees or just have a, you know, just keep building upon my knowledge as a roaster. So with that being said, how fast are we moving through the roast? And how do we begin to sort of categorize the information in our brain about ROR? When, when do I break the sort of like, when should I be concerned, right? About breaking maybe 30 uh, peak ROR or, or not be concerned at all or go, yeah, this coffee, it doesn't, it doesn't do that. We need to move slower. And that's why my peak ROR is slow and feel good about it and confident about that, that type of profile. Whereas, okay, now we're gonna get this other coffee. I need to break 30 um, in my peak ROR so that I do hit that certain development, I do get those flavors, okay? Um, when do I do that? That's the big question, you know? So I started having all these little questions 
revisiting it again, kind of just revisiting the basics about what I know, right? And I know I don't know everything. So I Googled some stuff. I was like, okay, you know, it's not really telling me what I particularly need to learn uh, or particularly questioning and need to know. I just need to run the experiment for myself and see what it means to me, you know, as a roaster with the kind of machine I have, with the type of coffee that I have, with the goals that I have for a particular roast, okay? So we have it right here. <laughs> We're 10 minutes in, let's taste this bad boy. Okay. So let me throw up the curves on the screen. I have this Colombian, it's very easy to roast. The flavors are cherry, dark chocolate, dark chocolate cherry sort of vibes. You can get other little nuances uh, in terms of flavor. Um, and you can get varied intensities of this cherry and dark chocolate at different levels of the roast, depending on how you roast it, if you move through it fast, if you move through it slow. So it's a really nice coffee to sort of play around with in terms of this sort of idea of what's the deal with this peak ROR? When do I use it? You know? So here's what I did. Typically, I roast this coffee, how I normally roast it, how I've been selling it, um, the charge temperature, um, 380, charge at 380. Now some would say that's low for this coffee. Elevation of this coffee is um, 1700 to 1800 uh, meters above sea level. And it's a wash process coffee. So it's not gonna be, like, it's not gonna be super resistant to heat, right? Um, but it's also not gonna take on heat as easily as say a low elevation natural, okay? So I charge at 380 and I do not soak. I do not turn off the fuel for like 30 seconds or a minute or, or whatever with a machine that's at one kg capacity, a batch that's at one kg too. Um, I'm on a Mill City Roaster, okay? Those are the stats, that's the context. Um, that's what I normally do and that's because I know I'm going to drop at a certain temp, I know what my curve's going to look like, and I typically will not have a peak ROR of over uh, 30. Let's bring it up. We drop this guy at 389, yes, something like that, 388, 389, 387. If I'm within there, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, looks like we're having a peak ROR of about 30, but nothing higher than that. Now, here is the test. I did one with a higher charge temp, 30 seconds soak, because of the higher charge temp. I didn't want to singe my coffee. It's not a very dense coffee. Uh, it's washed coffee, but it's not very dense, so I, I didn't want to just hit it with a lot of heat, okay? So we did, everything else is the same, but a 400 charge, 30 seconds soak, and we got a little bit higher peak ROR. Let's call it, let's call it 31. 32. Peak ROR 32. Okay. Peak ROR 32. All right. There's, there's a difference there. Okay. If I wanted a higher peak ROR for whatever reason, all I would need to change is my charge temp. And then to offset that much heat going on to these beans at this batch size and this, this type of machine, a lot of power, I would need to maybe soak for 30 seconds to a minute or something like that. This just sort of offset, just give it a little help. Just cradle that heat that's coming in really hot over 400, right? Maybe you go 405, 410 in terms of a higher charge temp. If you want even more, <laughs> this is for my friend who's like, it needs to hit the red line. <laughs> uh, so for whatever reason that you're running this experiment, I encourage it. I'm not gonna tell you to do anything Run the experiment. You need to find out. You can Google all the stuff you want, which is a good start, a good start to Google stuff and say, oh, what does this roaster have to say? In the end, you're gonna have to run your own experiment and make a decision on your own, okay? So we've got a peak ROR of 32. I'm usually not there. In a lot of my roasts, I'm usually not there. Um, probably because I charge lower and I don't soak. So I don't even get up to that area. Okay, that wouldn't really be a big deal to me unless it was affecting what's in the cup, all right? 
So with this being said, this was roasted a couple days back now. What was it on the 13th? So we're like five days away. Yeah, it's well rested. It's been sitting out like this, just like open. <laughs> Creamy, not acidic at all. We finished this at, um, or we dropped it at 388. So I wanted to keep it light. I wanted to sort of match the finishing temp of what I normally do, right? 388, but this is more developed, bottom line. So the, I had more heat, I had more energy coming into the roast. The total roast time, we've got 1017, what was the other one? 953, couple seconds, right? What was that, like 20 seconds-ish, okay? So we finished faster on how I normally do it. We have a 15% development versus a 17%. These are very small differences in terms of numbers, one or two percentile, one to two degrees, right? But look at the difference. So when I'm tasting a light roast of this coffee, when I'm not hitting that peak ROR, yeah, it's brighter. I've retained a little bit more of nuance in the cup. It's not as roasty. When I say this is more developed, I mean that it's had more heat applied to it. It has more roastier flavors, more chocolates, more vanilla, um, just generally tasting more roasted. And if we look at the bean development, yeah, they are a little swelled, which if I were to say this was light, I'd be like, eh, I don't know if I could call that light. So either I need to drop earlier and maybe um, be considerate of that final drop temperature. Um, I moved through uh, dry end a little slower than I'd like, or maybe did I mark it slower? <laughs> that I have to consider that too. I could have marked it slower in that maybe I didn't mark green to yellow right on the dot. There's even that, you know, like that margin of error. 456, 306, yeah. So I marked dry in a little later than I prefer to mark it, which these are just numbers. But this is, these are telling, like, I'm not going to run five more tests of this, but generally, Peak ROR, if you're using that as a tactic or as a method of roasting, you know, that's how you roast. And it's all preference, right? There's no wrong way. That's not, it's not wrong, this. It's it tastes good. If I were to um, sell this coffee and my goal for this coffee was to be medium roasts, medium darker roasts, which I can do. This coffee has the potential to do that. Don Vic which we offer that now. It's uh, offered at a darker roast because I, I can confidently say that it's it tastes good amongst all these levels, these different levels uh, from light to dark. Um, but if that was my goal, um, I think I, I would be okay with going, hey, let's, let's turn this standard into a higher charge temp. Let's soak for a little bit we would work that out and really systemize that. So say if I was like, you know, creating this profile and passing it down to the team that actually roasts it and say we put it into production, I would be like that. I would, I'd be like, okay, let's, um, let's go with a higher charge temp on this guy. Let's get that high peak, that peak ROR in terms of like, are we hitting the same numbers? Are we on the same path? Are we reading the same book in terms of like creating consistent product? Uh, because we're going to develop this coffee more for the audience. So if that was my goal, right, if my goal was to create those types of flavors, roastier, more developed, more bold cup, you still have that great cherry in there, but it's definitely a darker cherry. It's not a lighter cherry. Um, and that's the, that's the big change. And I think when you're, as a roaster, trying to create profiles, these are the types of little nuanced things that go on behind the scenes that the customer don't care about. They don't care about that stuff. But as a roaster, you go, okay, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna move towards this higher charge temp. We're gonna soak for a little bit because I need to see that peak ROR to know that y'all are roasting this at the right level. And we're bringing out that bold flavor in the cup that we want at the end of the day, okay? 
But if my goal was lighter roast overall, um, um, acidic, I want to focus on the acidic flavors in this cup. I want to bring that out. I want to retain that then I would not be concerned with trying to hit a very high peak ROR. I would be like, keep that at like, you better be under 30. <laughs> you better be under 30 peak ROR if I'm going to look at your roast and see that you're being consistent and producing a light roast profile that I'm looking for. Does that make sense? So as I revisit these ideas of peak ROR or development time or any of the little things that kind of make up roast theory and roasting in general. It's really fun for me to go back and just like piece together things because when you first learn, you're just like blah. And then this sticks, this sticks, this sticks. I need to do this, 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 a sort of macro level. You make it happen, you roast the coffee, good or bad, whatever, and you just keep doing that, right? And little by little, as you read certain things, as you uh, watch videos, go to courses, training, whatever, like certain things start to click and make sense. One day it's all going to really click for you. You're going to really feel confident. And then you're going to start making like blends and start making your profiles and maybe even talking about coffee like this, whatever, like, oh yeah, there's a slight little difference, but it makes a, it's slight, but it's a big difference, you know, uh, things like that. So it's, it's fun for me to go back. It's sort of like, Okay, people are talking about peak ROR, and I usually kind of write it off because I already, I already by second nature, just go do what I need to do based on my goals. But I didn't stop myself to, to like really explain and be confident to explain why, right? So I think it's nice that for myself as I document what I'm doing as I'm learning as a roaster, I sort of just document, yeah, why? Okay, let's, let's talk about it. Because <laughs> maybe it'll help somebody else, like one of y'all out there, and uh, maybe just explain like peak ROR isn't, you know, that's not really the goal. The goal is this. The goal is this right here. Okay, I want more development. I want more, um, my audience is asking for more medium roast, darker roast, because all, all my audience like espressos and stuff. But they keep telling me like it's sour or da da da. Like, so if this is my goal, what do I need to do to get that? Sometimes that coffee would require a higher peak ROR in the roast to move through the roast um, uh, in a way that transfers the heat from the roaster to the coffee at the right speed, right? Because your ROR is just how fast you're going through the roast, but how much energy too is being applied um, at that same time. A lot of thermodynamics that <laughs> this is not the place to explain it. But um, that's why coffee is a science and an art. And that's the art part, you know? So I don't know, like that's just my feelings on the peak ROR thing. Kind of stuck in my head about that, that my, my friend kept telling me, he's like, <laughs> it's not hitting the red line. I know what he means. He's like, I'm not hitting that peak ROR. I'm like, yeah, but do you need it? If you need it, okay, let's talk about it. Charge, charge higher, higher. Maybe incorporate a soak because maybe, um, maybe that's a lot of heat at once, right? If it's not cool, if like you're you got a really well insulated, uh, larger, uh, batched, I guess uh, machine, maybe you don't need to soak. But you've got to run the experiment to really find out. You can read all the stuff. You can listen and watch all the stuff. But you've got to run the experiment, experiment to find out for yourself and then make a decision that you can confidently say, either on camera like this, and be like, yeah, that's why I'm not doing it. Or, yeah, that's why I'm doing it. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, peak ROR. <laughs> I was like, what? I, I kind of, like, I knew, like, in my head, what I wanted, what I want to do with it, you know, this idea of peak ROR, it's not really a big deal. It's just a, a method of roasting that you use to sort of like, um, it's like a, it's another path to roasting if, uh, if you needed to go there, if you needed that heat, okay? But I couldn't really explain it that well as I'm sort of stumbling through my words right now, but I want to just put it down on, on camera to let you know that it's okay to ask the question, but don't just blindly be like, all my roasts need to hit peak 
30 ROR. That's, that's, not, that's not what it's about. <laughs> but maybe you're there, because I was there too. Maybe you're there and you're like, just let me try it, all right? Let me just hit peak ROR 30. I don't really taste the difference right now. That's fine. You know, let it marinate. Because time and experience and just kind of going through the motions um, and you, you keep tasting and cupping the coffee, you'll get there, you know, and hopefully you have some clear goals ahead of front of you. That way you can actually roast what you um, are looking for. But if you don't know what you're looking for, how can you roast it, right? So keep learning, keep trying things out, keep tasting, and let that curiosity just sort of like, oh, okay, mm, 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 mm. All right, hope that was helpful. We'll see you in the next one.